of my podcast. My name is Cheryl and this is Cappuccino Crafts, my little channel on YouTube and my corner of the general interwebs where I like to talk about knitting and other crafty things and books and sometimes TVs or movies that I'm watching and other life and chatty things that I want to share with you. Thank you so much for choosing to watch this video and spend a little bit of your time with me. I really hope that you enjoy it. Please settle in, get yourself a delicious beverage, and let's enjoy a lovely visit. And today is March 28th, another Monday, and it was a good week. It, it was. <laughs> I said that like I wasn't sure, but um, yes, it was a good week and it was also busy. <laughs> good and busy. Um, but I did get something a little creative. I did a little creative something and uh, I did reading, so there was time for all the important things. Um, my creative thing is not knitting or crochet though, but I will definitely show it to you. And this is going to be a lot about the readathon um, because my reading was focused on cleaning up the books that I started but didn't finish during the one week um, gear up mini magical readathon and also getting ready for the main event the spring equinox term the first term in Aurelium Academy uh, so the one month magical readathon Aurelium Academy starts April 1st I've been getting ready for that cleaning up the things I didn't finish in the Gear Up mini readathon and my creative, uh, my creative project that I did also is related to the readathon. Um, people have been posting so many character pictures, art that they've done or that they've made with, um, well, some people are uh, creating their characters in The Sims um, to get a picture of their character. And some there's like anime avatar creators people are using. All kinds of different ways people are visualizing and m making uh, pictures and art to represent their characters. And it's been fun looking at all of them. They're really cool. And it's just looking at all the, all the different kinds of ways people are um, making their characters. And also just some of the art is really stunning. So I was like so inspired and wishing, it made me desperately wish that I had a visual image for my character that I have created. So I'm going to introduce to you Kaelwyn. I'll spell her name. <laughs> it's a weird spelling. Um, and I drew its pencil, but I think it should still show well enough on the camera. But I um, did 
like a draft. And then after the draft picture worked out pretty well, surprisingly, because I do not draw. I really do not draw. But um, my draft picture turned out okay. I was like, I don't hate that. That's better than I thought it would be. Honestly, it turned out a little bit better than I thought it would be. So I'm like, I'm going to try and do it in my journal um, to do a better version. And I'm going to show you the picture that I drew with a pencil of Kaelwyn. She is an earth earthling. And the spots that you see, these spots, and there's some on her face, um, all earthling, uh, all earthlings develop those spots, uh, during adolescence as they're growing up into adulthood and each element has a different color for the spots. So the earth earthlings for the earth element, their spots are green. So if this was in color, those little spots would be green. And I'm thinking like a moss green, a very mossy green. Um, and I, I just had to have antlers. I really wanted my character to have antlers and I, and I wanted the ears and I love the ears. I think the ears are, I think the ears and the antlers together, it's just a great look. And I think the ears are adorable. I think I like them even better than the antlers, but um, this is Kaelwyn. She is in the house of the Crescent. Or the, the guild, her guild is the Order of the Crescent. <laughs> and maybe sometime I'll draw a picture of her cat familiar. Because she did get a cat familiar during the Gear Up readathon. Um, as well as a staff to channel her magic. Um, so that was the creative thing. Do you want to see the draft? I brought it up here. Here was my first attempt, my draft. Yeah, here it is. That was, that was the first one. And it's cute. It's still cute. Um, that's why I felt encouraged to try again and make it even better because I'm like, okay, that's not horrible. I think I can do it. Um, now let's get to the books. Um, I finished two books, the ones that I, um, started during the mini readathon. So I finished The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemison. And I loved it. I think I, for pure enjoyment and just mind blowing, fifth season just was more mind-blowing, more overall enjoyable for me. And I think that's because it was the first book, so everything was new. And I had no idea what to expect. And I was like, just... Um, and... Excuse me. Um... You know, in the second book, you kind of, you kind of have an idea. It's not as new. Um, and so I think that's why this one 
slightly dipped in enjoyment. Um, and I think um, for me, the pacing wasn't as great. Um, you know, so maybe, maybe just a tiny touch of middle book syndrome because a lot of this was setting up for the finale and um, we learned a lot and things happened. It's not that nothing happened, but it did feel like it was a little bit more set up than actual, like really making big progress. And, you know, in a trilogy, in a series, it's hard to avoid that kind of thing. Um, you know, in series, you'll have bridge books. Um, and that's just how series are. Um, so I don't fault it. I don't think it's a problem. I don't think it's a fault. Um, and you know, definitely things still happened and we learned a whole lot, but we still have a lot of questions and maybe some new questions. We learned a lot, but not everything. And we also have a few new questions. So a lot to look forward to if for the third book, the finale. Very, very excited for the Stone Sky. I'm not sure. I. Maybe I'll f have to find a way to fit that into the April prompts for the readathon um, because I am excited for it. Um, but we'll see what happens in April. But uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure before the end of the year, I'm going to have to read Stone Sky um, because I'm really hyped for it right now after finishing the second book. Um, yeah, and I also finished uh, Castle in the Sky by Diana Wynne Jones, which is the second book in the Howl's Moving Castle series. And the main character is not Howl. So um, don't pick up this book um, thinking that it's going to be centered on Howl and Sophie because it is not. Um, but it is a good story. It's a lot of fun. It's got the same whimsy and it's got a lot of magic and there's prophecy and all kinds of things. Um, the, the, it starts in a different country from the country that Hal and Sophie live in, in this um, magical world. Um, basically based on like Arabian culture and Arabian stories. Um, it's very much got like a Scheherazade, uh, a thousand and one Arabian Nights uh, vibe. Uh, there's a the main character is a carpet merchant in a city, and he there's a magic carpet, and that kicks off a whole adventure and a quest to save a princess. Um, and it's, it's very fun. Uh, Hal and Sophie do come in as supporting characters after a while, but not until, uh, not early in the book. Um, so their role is, yeah, they, they're not, you're not going to see a lot of them, um, but they will come in later as support and um yeah so we do get a little catch up but not a lot we don't really know a lot about what happened with Hal and Sophie between these two books but we do at least get to see them a little bit and 
I did get attached to the new main character and the new story. Um, it did take a little bit. Um, I did, I was missing Helen Sophie just a bit. And, um, but once I really got engaged and attached to the new characters, it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. So that is Castle in the Sky by Diana Wynne Jones. So that finished all of my character creation and all my gear ready for the start of the first term of Aurelium Academy. And then just uh, several days ago in the middle of the week, it was announced. Um, G posted a video on her channel. Her channel is Book Roast, announcing that indeed the spring term, and she's calling it Equinox. The next term is going to be Autumn Equinox in August, even though August is not autumn yet, but um, she just likes having the August, so why not? And it is the Equinox time. Um or close to the equinox um, approaching. Anyway, so she was able to um, be prepared and she is um, able to host it in April. So I'm glad that I just plowed on and finished those books um, quickly. Um, so that I am ready in April and I've been looking at the prompts and choosing my career path um, for what I'm going to study because depending on what career you want to choose and the career in this world is called a calling. So depending on the calling that you want to study for, you have certain classes you need to take and each class has a prompt. Um, so that is how you plan your readathon reading. Um, so I've been thinking and planning. I did order a book from, um, from a bookstore. Uh, the one that I shop at when I shop in person. Um, my closest book. Uh, indie bookstore. I went in and I hoped they would have it, but they didn't have it in the store. They have it in their warehouse. So I put an order in. Um, and when it comes into the store, I will pick it up. But um, I ordered it for a prompt because um, I'm like, that's not a super... Some of the prompts... Um, are more general and some of the prompts are more specific so um i'm like hmm anyway so i will show you that book when i get it uh it's going to be sometime in the middle of the A of april because she said it'll take a couple weeks for it to come into the store but i have time um and i don't think it's a super long book and if I change my idea about my calling, I might not need that prompt anyway. I am thinking of several options, depending on how my reading goes. Um, so I'm trying to, to be strategic and um, go with the calling that fits my pace of reading. Um, and fits what I'm really feeling like reading. Um, anyway, so that has been readathon preparation. And I also did um, make some more progress in late migrations. This is a book, a nonfiction book of essays um, with a mix of memoir, like family memoir, and 
nature writing and it does have a theme that kind of comes through the connecting essays of um, life and death and grief and joy and birth in families in our human lives but also in nature and also climate change and how um all all living beings are um having to find ways to adjust um as things are changing in the in the in the climate in the environment um so it's got all of those themes they're really good i really really like this book and i am not hurrying through it it because it's essays and they are all quite short um all between like one and three pages mostly there might be a couple that are longer like maybe four or five would be the longest so they're quite short essays it's one of those books that you can really just pick up at any time and if you've only got five minutes you can get through one essay um if you um are just relaxing and having your tea but want to sit down and enjoy um some of these like very reflective and and um thoughtful um essays you can you know read as many as you want and because they're so short you like is sometimes it can be hard to stop at one because you're like i can read one more it's two pages um and you just kind of one more one more um Yeah, so I, I did get a little farther in this. And that was everything that I read this week. Um, yeah. I hope that you are doing well. I hope that you enjoyed, have enjoyed hearing about all this readathon stuff. It's been really fun for me. Um, I like, like, the character and this, like, RPG game uh, feel of it um, where you know you build your character you do the challenges you level up you get stuff for your character and tell a story it makes it really fun for me so I hope that it's been fun hearing about that uh, as you watch and listen um, our, and is, is anybody who watches this are you participating um if you are i'd love to hear about what you read and what your character is and um maybe what what calling or career you're considering studying for at the academy um but in any case, and wherever you are, um, I hope that you're enjoying what you're reading and that you are enjoying any creative projects that you have. And I hope that you and your loved ones and your family uh, are all well and safe and um I'm just really glad that we can have books and creative outlets to um, to be there when we need a little bit of a break from everything else in the world um, and to help um, to help bring a little bit of joy in difficult times or just when we're tired 
Um, so, see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.